Well, hello everyone. The topic of this video is sinus bradycardia in the human heart. And this could be a pathological condition, but it could also be a physiological condition in elite athletes. Now, talking about heart rate. Healthy people should have a normal resting heart rate of around 60 to 100 beats per minute. A normal heart rate is shown here on this ECG. On the other hand, a slow heart rate, which is known as a sinus bradycardia, is a resting heart rate of less than 60 beats per minute. Sinus bradycardia is shown here on this ECG. The peaks are called R waves. And as you can see, the R waves are further apart than the normal ECG, which means the heart is beating slower. Sinus bradycardia can be a pathological condition in non-athletic individuals or it can be a physiological condition in elite aerobic athletes. The main pathological cause of sinus bradycardia is sick sinus syndrome, or also known as SSS. This is not a specific disease, but rather a number of abnormalities that may result in dysfunction of the sinoatrial node. And if you don't know what the sinoatrial node is, well, let me tell you. It is the pacemaker of the heart, and in SSS, the pacemaker is unable to generate or conduct appropriate signals to allow the heart to contract and beat at a normal rate. There are a number of other causes of pathological sinus bradycardia. It can be the side effect from different drugs, ion imbalances that alter action potentials, myocardial ischemia, particularly when it leads to the death of sinoatrial node cells, and can arise from sleep apnea. There are some other problems here, a little more rare however such as hypothermia or hypoglycemia, but this can still result in the observed slowing of the heart rate. Individuals suffering from pathological sinus bradycardia will present with a wide range of symptoms, but oftentimes these may be overlooked until the condition has progressed to a very serious level. The person will tend to feel dizzy, might experience fainting episodes, shortness of breath, and feel fatigued during everyday activities. And I don't know about you, but that sounds absolutely horrible. So it is important to note that these symptoms may be seen in a number of different cardiovascular disorders. So proper diagnosis is, say it with me, keys to success. Following intense aerobic exercise training, an athlete's heart may undergo changes such as cardiac myocyte hypertrophy, leading to growth of the left ventricle, increased contractility, meaning the heart contracts more forcefully, a greater volume of blood ejected from the left ventricle with each contraction, and last but not least, a volume overload leading to greater venous return and further hypertrophy of the cardiac myocytes. So all these structural and functional changes to the heart following aerobic exercise training make the heart more efficient at pumping blood, which allows the athlete's resting heart rate to be lower than a non-athletic individual. So let's hear it. Who wants to go for a run? Now before we throw in our running shoes and do that 10k run that I know we were all going to do, we have to remember then interpreting ECG traces between physiological and pathological sinus bradycardia leads to some confusion. As 80% of athletes show ECG abnormalities that appear to be pathological, and there is a significant overlap in ECG changes between athletes and cardiovascular disease patients, but there are also some changes which can be used to determine the difference between the two. In patients who are not elite athletes, a sinus pause of greater than three seconds on an ECG trace is noted when the patient is awake. This is an indicator of pathological bradycardia. On the other hand, in elite athletes, this sinus pause while awake is not an indicator of pathology. Also, it is not uncommon for athletes to experience a heart rate below 30 beats per minute or sinus pauses greater than two seconds while asleep. So we've talked a lot about what is that abnormal and what is normal, but what is the main distinguishing factor you ask? Stress testing. We can use a stress test to determine whether the sinus bradycardia is pathological in a patient's heart or whether the sinus bradycardia is due to the physiological changes which occur in an athlete's heart. So I'll start out here by explaining stress testing in the non-athletic population, which usually indicates a pathological sinus bradycardia. So with exercise, the patient's heart rate won't increase to the level it should. And when the exercise is reduced, 
the heart rate won't normalize properly. And because of this, the heart is unable to match the increased demands of the body during a stress test. And this is known as exercise intolerance. And this, my friends, is pathological. In contrast to this, stress testing in the athletic population usually indicates a physiological sinus bradycardia. So with exercise, the patient's heart rate will increase properly. And when exercise is reduced, the heart rate will also normalize properly. And because of this, the heart is able to match the increased demands of the body during the stress test. The athlete is therefore able to tolerate exercise, and this indicates a physiological change. So I don't know about you guys, but I feel like going for a run. So I hope that we all know by now that sinus bradycardia is a resting heart rate below 60 beats per minute, which is lower than what we would expect in the average individual. We know it can be seen in elite athletes as a physiological adaptation or in non-athletes as a pathological adaptation. You know, although both can show very similar results in laboratory tests, knowledge about the differences between the two is very powerful when it comes to treating diseased individuals. So thank you all for listening to this presentation about sinus bradycardia. I hope you really enjoyed it and I hope that everyone has a fantastic day.